five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition and lift off. Stage one chamber pressures are nominal. Vehicles pitching downrange. Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off with the SXM-8 satellite from Space Launch Complex 40. Now the next Our event coming up... Next event coming up here is max Q, and that is maximum aerodynamic pressure. That's the largest structural load that the vehicle will see on ascent. So we do power down the engines just slightly in preparation. And then after, is supersonic. after max Q, we will throttle them back up. Vehicle has reached maximum aerodynamic pressure. And there's that call out that we just passed through max Q. So in about a couple of minutes, we will have three events happening within seconds of each other. That'll be main engine cutoff, or what we call MECO, stage separation, and SES-1, or second engine start one. Now main engine cutoff is where we shut down all nine of those M1D engines on that first stage. And that slows the vehicle down in preparation for and stage separation. Started. Stage separation is where the first stage separates from the second stage. And the first stage will begin to make its way back home to Earth for landing. And stage two will continue on its journey with the third event, SES-1. Now that's where the MVAC engine on the second stage lights up and propels the second stage along with the SXM-8 satellite to orbit. And we're just under about 20 seconds away from those three events. Again, that is MECO, stage separation, and SES-1. Miko. State separation confirmed. And back ignition. And there you could see all three of those events, Miko and state separation. On your left-hand screen is a view of first stage. On your right-hand screen, you could see that MVAC engine on the second stage glowing bright red. You also got a little glimpse of the green uh, T-TEB ignition for SES-1. Now we're coming up on fairing deploy here, just under 10 seconds Vehicles away. on a nominal trajectory. Fairing separation confirmed. And there we got a nice live visual of the fairing halves deploying from second stage. As a reminder, this was the first flight for both fairing halves, and we will be attempting to recover these new fairing halves with the help of our recovery vessel's Go Navigator. Sure. As second stage head towards its targeted orbit, stage one will execute two burns in order to make its way back to Earth. The first of those two burns is called the entry burn, and that's where we light up three of the nine M1D engines. Now this helps to slow re-entering back into the upper parts of the Earth's simulator. atmosphere. And then after the entry burn will be the second and final burn, and that is the landing burn. Now, this is a single engine burn that brings the vehicle speed down rapidly in order to touch down on our drone ship. Again, today we will be attempting to land on just read the instructions.
If you're just catching up with us, we had a successful launch of Falcon 9 from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station's 40 launch pad. And now you're looking at a live view of Falcon 9's stage two as it delivers the flight to orbit. Stage one is currently cruising back to our drone ship. Just read the instructions in the Atlantic Ocean. And as a reminder, today's mission is for Sirius X carrying our the SXM-8 satellite to its targeted orbit. Falcon 9 continues to follow a nominal trajectory. And SXM-8 is the 12th satellite to be launched for Sirius XM service. It transmits 73 decibel watts at peak power, which is 20 million watts of power. Now, de deploying the unfurlable reflector is like opening a large umbrella in space. And a very large umbrella, it, it's about 9 meters or 29 feet, which is taller than the average two-story house. Now, with the solar arrays deployed, the length of the satellite is about the same length as a 737 air, airplane. Now, we're coming up on entry burn on the first stage, just under 10 seconds away or so. Stage one FTS has saved. Stage one entry burn startup. And there you heard the call out and on your left hand screen, you could see that the entry burn has begun on the first stage. The seconds or so. And again, it helps to slow the vehicle down as it's entering back into the Earth's atmosphere. Stage one entry burn shut down. And again, there's that call out and you can see on your left hand screen that the entry burn has on your right hand screen, stage two is still looking nominal. And we're just about a minute away from the landing burn on the first stage. And right before the landing burn will be second engine cutoff one or SE or, or SECO one. And that's where we shut down that MVAC engine that you're looking at on your screen there. The reminder, we do have two burns of this MVAC engine for today's mission. And that helps get Second the... Second stage is in terminal guidance. That helps get the SXM-8 satellite to its final orbit. Stage one, transonic. Again, a couple events happening back to back here. Seco one Stage coming up two, here shortly. Stage system has saved. Followed by the landing burn. Stage one landing burn startup. Sounds like the landing burn has begun on first stage. We can see. Expected loss of signal. Cape. Sounds like we also got a good Normal orbit on the second stage. Insertion. Stage one landing like deploy. And we have touchdown of Falcon 9. Falcon 9 has stage just, one landing confirmed. <laughs> just landed on our drone ship. Just read the instructions. Today marks the 87th overall successful recovery of an orbital class rocket, as well as SpaceX's 125th successful mission to date. Now, while that was all happening, we did have a successful SECO, SECO-1 and a call out for good orbit. So now that second stage is going to coast uh, in this orbit for or so. So we'll see you back here at T plus 25 minutes for the second stage relay. Welcome back to the live webcast of SpaceX's SXM-8 mission. We had an on-time liftoff at 12... Chill is underway. We had an on-time liftoff at 12.26 a.m. Eastern Time from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Stage one returned back to Earth and touched down on a drone ship. Just read the instructions. And this was the third flight and landing for this specific booster. Our second stage is still looking good on a nominal trajectory after its first burn. And now it's getting ready for SES-2 in a few seconds here. 
SES2 is second engine start two. And again, as I mentioned earlier, we do have two burns for this second stage in order to get the SXM8 satellite to its final orbit. And we're just about 20 seconds away from SES2. That burn will last just about 35 seconds or so long and will be followed by SECO2 or second engine cutoff 2. Have that ignition. And there you can visually see on your screen that second stage ending back up. Again, this is the second of two burns. It lasts just about 30 or so seconds long. And that cut off. And there we have confirmed SECO2, or second engine cutoff 2. And we did get a good orbit. So we now have I'm another coast insertion. phase. We have another coast phase before we can deploy the SXM-8 satellite from Falcon 9's second stage. So we'll see you back here around T minus 31 minutes. Three T plus 31 minutes. <laughs> Welcome back once again to our broadcast for our SXM-8 mission. If you're just joining us, here's a quick recap of today's milestones. We had a successful liftoff from Space Launch Complex 40 at 12.26 a.m. Eastern Time. From there, we had a successful stage separation, recovered this first stage for the third time on our drone ship, just read the instructions, and have had two successful second stage MVAC engine startups. Now we are coming up on the deployment of SXM-8, Sirius XM's next generation satellite. Let's listen in for the call out for payload deploy coming up here in a few seconds. Payload separation confirmed. And there you can see on your screen the SXM-8 satellite drifting away from second stage, confirming payload deploy. What an awesome view of the satellite drifting away. With a successful separation of the SXM-8 satellite from Falcon 9's second stage, that will bring our webcast coverage to a close. To the Range and Federal Aviation Administration, thank you for supporting today's mission. And of course, to all of our viewers, thank you for supporting our mission by tuning in to today's webcast. We'll see you next time.